Hey, what's up, rock stars? It's Rox with a little bit of talk about what's at the top of the blogs. Why is this car parked so fucking close? I don't even know how they got out that car. Look at this. Do you guys see how close they are to my car? Really? Did you really need to be that? I'm going to sit here and we going to figure out when they come back to their car, how just how they going to get in there, you guys. But anyway, top of the blogs, let's get to it, shall we? None of these subjects are exciting. I was like, let me get out here and do this damn video before I just don't do it at all. But you know what? We're going we gonna to make it do what it do, y'all. First up on the list, prosperity preacher Creflo Dollar has summoned all of his parishioners and followers somewhere around the amount of 200,000 people to, quote, commit to sowing $300 or more towards their church's goal of purchasing a G650 airplane. He put a video out and he was asking, Asking for this money and after extreme pressure brother man took the damn video down and uh, has kind of backed off of the campaign however you can still donate it is still up on his website now pastor dollar wants it to be understood that the reason why he wants a new plane is because the plane that they have right now is a 30 year old plane it's flown them all over the world you know he's doing world missions and things like this okay and um, it's flown them all over however lately he's been having all kind of engine trouble i think they said that the engine died in australia but they were able to land safely or something like that and uh, he tired of getting lonnie the shade tree mechanic to fix the damn engine <laughs> so he was just like you know what i'm gonna ask my people to give me this money okay because they're gonna do whatever i tell them to do and then i'll just you know i'll dress it up and say that it's the lord's work now if you have questions about what exactly happens in this 65 million dollar plane well i got the answers for you they say it's a 14 seat jet with two Two Rolls Royce engines. It has like two satellites. It has internet connectivity. It's able to fly from Los Angeles to New York in, you know, under five hours, four and a half hours. Now, the whole time they was asking for this damn money, you know, they kept on saying our church and it'll be our jet. And, you know, this is to help our pastor do, you know, the work, the Lord's work in all these different countries. Okay. Well, if it's our jet, 14 seats, yeah, where the other 199,900? 184 people go sit. <laughs> That's a whole bunch of motherfuckers on laps, okay? Yeah, what I want Creflo and Taffy to do is go take their ass to the airport and buy you a ticket, okay? I, I'm, I'm even saying splurge. Get you a first class ticket, okay? And sit your ass down in that seat and be quiet, okay? Where the fuck you got to go in such a hurry anyway? Africa will wait. You ain't, it ain't, this ain't nothing that you can't just wait, you know, the required amount of regular flying time, okay? So yeah, I, I came with Creflo Dollar, but you know, I've been through with Creflo and Taffy for quite some time, ever since he was trying to justify Pastor Eddie Long's dicking down to the babies over at the uh, 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 new birth. Yeah, I, I was through. I'm so tired of people taking advantage of their position. I know that he could calls himself a prosperity preacher. I don't have any problem with preaching the fact that, you know, we should all do well and everything. But, you know, when you crossing the line, you crossing the line, okay? And that's why he took that shit down. But, you know, the thing about it is he'll probably get the money because he has a lot of followers. And there's a lot of people that buy into that. But if that's what the Lord has led you to do, then that's fine, okay? As far as me and my God, yeah, Creflo and Taffy can get their ass up on American Airlines or United just like anybody else. Sorry. <laughs> you guys next up i don't know what the fuck is wrong with raven simone i don't really know what she's going through but raven simone seems to just be stuck you know what it really is is sometimes we as people we be in such a quest to show that we're liberal minded that we are not you know conforming to societal norms that we are free thinkers and that we're not boxing ourselves into the way that everybody else thinks sometimes when we be in this quest to show ourselves that way you know we just come off looking real stupid okay and idiotic and i think that that's what raven has done for herself she was on the view the other day and she, they were talking about the univision host that got fired for saying First Lady Michelle Obama looked like a character from the Planet of the Apes. And Raven wanted us to believe that she didn't feel that it was racial. Her reasoning was that some people do look like monkeys, okay? Fuck, I look like a bird. 
Okay, am I supposed to get upset that people call me Toucan Sam? What I want to tell Raven, you look like a fucking bird, you just look like a damn bird. We all know that monkeys is synonymous with a racial stereotype and the undertones of black people, monkeys in the zoo, that we're wild, that we're untamed, that we're uneducated. I mean, you cannot be that ignorant. Even as a young girl, I know that Raven hasn't lived, but you know, you old enough to fucking know when it's a, when it's a racial undertone or not. And I don't know if it's because she was on a television show with white people and, uh, you know, she felt that she needed to maybe represent for the other side. You know, Raven doesn't necessarily consider herself, well, you know, I don't want to misquote her, but didn't she say some shit about she didn't feel African American or that, you know, she don't want to ignore whatever side? Yeah, listen. When I look at Raven, bitch, you black, you cannot compare being looking like a bird to looking like a monkey. Not when we talking about black people. I'm sorry. I used to try to give Raven a break or a pass because, like I said, I knew she was a young girl and she was just kind of trying to find her way. She's a black girl. She was, you know, always the perfect Disney child. And now she finds herself gay and all of these things that kind of go against, you know, American tradition, even though American tradition seems to be changing every day. But you know what I mean. And, uh, so I, I kind of was feeling like maybe she just didn't want to box herself in. She didn't express herself well. You know, I was trying to give her a break. But, you know, in situations like this, I'm just like, no, I can't give her a break. And I can't give her a pass because now you just really are not thinking correctly. And I think that guy should have been fired because, look, if you think that uh, Michelle Obama looks like a monkey, then that's fine. That's your opinion. And you can have your own opinion. But when you're on a television show, a national television show, and you voice such controversial terms that you know are going to get people riled up, especially in today's days and times with this whole racial thing and everything is about race. Even shit that's not about race is about race. If this car hits my car, I promise you it's going to be, y'all, what's going to be? Look at this. What the hell? Can y'all see how close the damn car is? What the hell is going on? There's some old people trying to back in. <sighs> Anyway, you guys, I don't even remember what I was saying. Yeah, they old. I'm going to give them a break, too. Oh, but what I was saying about the um, the host is you can't say shit like this on TV. It's, uh, there's certain things you might feel. Sometimes shit might even be true about certain things, but you can't just be blasting it on television, okay? Not without some type of, um, some type of response from the American people, okay? The American black people who's pissed off about what he says and they under pressure, they let that guy go. They, they released him and he did put out a statement, you know, apologizing for what he said and all that. And look, I don't know. I, I mean, that's fine. He apologized and all of that but yeah maybe this is gonna get people to think twice about saying certain things certain things is just absolutely no way that you can justify and say that it's not racial that was racial raven and while we're talking about raven let's also talk about how she was at um a little kim concert the other day with her bestie jesse smollett and put up an instagram picture that she was at the uh, queen bees concert and then she hashtag beehive and you know she went on to say whatever she was enjoying herself with. Oh my God, these people didn't fucking hit my car. I mean, hit the shit hard. She carrying a baby in the car seat. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. And it's raining. <sighs> Anyway, of course, after she hashtag Beehive, Beyonce stand swarmed in on her Instagram and started leaving, you know, the little emoticon of the bee. And they just kept on doing it over and over. So, you know, then she comes back and replies, you know, no worries to the Beehive, okay? Little Kim was the queen bee uh, right when Beyonce was just falling dangerously in love, okay? It's no disrespect to the Beehive or to Beyonce, but, you know, Queen Lil' Kim is the original Queen Bee. Whatever she said, listen, stunts and shows. Okay, you know what the hell you was doing when you when you hashtag the Beehive. She can do that if she wants to, but, you know, everybody is gonna come. It's like, I feel like she knew that that was gonna happen because the fucking Beehive is fucking crazy and everybody knows it, and the minute you say anything against their master, that's the result. So, you guys, yeah, I'm <laughs> like crazy. Little dollar Raven Simone, I'm over her ass too. This motherfucker is still trying to get. Th I feel kind of bad for him because it's raining and this man just—they trying to change this baby's diaper in the front of the car. 
I mean, I, I'm not going to get out and help him change the diaper and everything, but I feel bad. Like, I don't know why they didn't go inside where it's not raining. And then, oh, I feel bad for them. Anyway, you guys, Common was on Jon Stewart. And one of the topics that they were talking about was the SAE fraternity that got kicked out of the school, be, you know, because of the, the chant where they was like, it'll never be a nigga at SAE or whatever the name of the song was. And people are a little bit upset about what, common said so first off john stewart had made a, a really good point where he said the conservatives oh the baby is walking oh yeah i feel so bad and there's a little old lady trying to why don't she just pick the baby up the baby is like look y'all can you see it it's a lady and the baby is like I mean, a baby can't be more than one or two years old, and she's making the baby walk, and it's raining, and, and you know, they just, why don't she pick her up and hurry her ass up into the building? Hurry up. Look at that poor thing. I'm sorry, y'all. I feel bad for them. Anyway, I can't, I'm all distracted by what's going on here. Um... But yeah, John Stewart was saying that the conservatives will say black people don't take responsibility for themselves, you know, pull up your pants, go get a job. And then in the same breath, when you have white privileged kids at this, you know, a prestigious university, it, it now becomes, well, what do you expect? Okay, they are overrun and overpowered by hip hop. They, they can't think straight, basically. Everything is not their fault that they hear the word nigga and so they sing it in their song. So it's always a double standard there. I thought John Stewart was good with pointing that out. And then when Common got out there, what John and Common were both trying to say was I think that we all need to recognize that there is a racism problem still in America, very much so, that we need to deal with it and then we need to try to move forward. But the unfortunate thing about what Common said was that he, you know, probably didn't use the best choice of words. Common was like we should forget about the past. And, you know, everybody was like, Arr! No, you know, we can't forget about the past because when you forget about the past, what do you do? You are most likely to repeat the same mistakes in the future. So what you should do is you should learn from the past. And I think that's probably what he should have said. Learn from the past and then deal with it and then move forward. And I'm going to give Common a pass because Common is, he's a conscious, he's a conscious rapper, right? And I'm sure he understands that we can't forget about the, you know, the shit that has happened to us black people over the years. I was just talking to one of my friends at work who just came back from Prague and he was just saying how he was talking to a family there and they all was talking in their language and they had their culture and you know the, he, he said it was just really sad to think how we as black people have been robbed of our culture because you know we can't really identify with anything he was like you know, unless we go back to Africa, we've got all these people here in America who know nothing about really, really where we come from, our tribes and, you know, our cultural ways and things like that. I ain't trying to get deep on you guys. I don't, I don't even know what was the point that I was making in all of that. But I think what I was saying was that I'm sure Common realizes that and that he just, you know, was just an unfortunate slip of words and that he didn't quite mean it that way. Sometimes when you're on live television, I know even when I'm on my videos, I'll say something something and then I, I didn't mean it that way but people will take it that way and then you got to wait you know a whole however many days to do the video to explain what you were doing and you know and, and in that time shit can just blow out of proportion and people will be thinking that you said something and that ain't really what you meant so <clears throat> I'm gonna take the liberties of explaining to you guys what common meant it's okay common baby I, Rocky got you Pikachu is going to be on Ayanla next week. Have you guys seen the commercials? I'm sure you have. It's been all over Instagram. It's been all over Twitter. I'm sure it's been all over the old network. I, I don't watch um, really much of Oprah's channel. But, uh, yeah, you know, we got Ayanla. Love, Chris betrayed you. I want the world to know what about Chris Brown. And then you got Pikachu looking all pensive and, you know, like she's really going to lay it down on us. Man, listen, this is exactly how it's going to go. Ayala going to try to, you know, shake some sense into that simple ass child. In, in which, after that, Chris Brown is going to answer in one of the most bitchiest rants that you ever known. Okay, complete with calling Ayala like, you know, a purple lip crackhead or 
<laughs> some shit like that. Then after that, we will see Pikachu and Chris Brown and the new baby together at Chuck E. Cheese celebrating her first damn birthday. Listen, that's how that shit gonna go. <laughs> we done been through this shit with, with Chris and Cariucci a whole bunch of times, you guys. I want to believe that this child is gonna leave him alone, but I don't believe it. So yeah, you guys, I ain't even watching that damn interview. Y'all watch the fucking interview and tell me what happened. But remember my words, mark them please. And remember that you heard it here first. It's gonna be some full of fucking niggatry with that damn interview. I promise you. All right, you guys, and then quickie, someone said that ABC is threatening to cancel um, the comedy show Blackish, starring Michael, um, what's his name? Michael Anderson, Anthony Anderson, and um, Tracy Ellis Ross because it's being squashed in the ratings by Empire. I don't know if that's true. I'm sure they're getting squashed in the ratings, but I don't understand why they wouldn't just change them to a different time slot, different day, and uh, be fine. Fuck, they could put that shit on when be a man. I shouldn't say that because then you guys will be saying, I can't believe that you are not supporting that sister in her show and that you would want to put two black people against each other. <laughs> okay, fuck, don't be in my comments with that bullshit today. I'm just joking. But um, they could move the time slot. They could move the day and the show will do fine. Famous ex-spouses Tori Hart and Kevin Hart have kissed and made up. And it looks like Kevin Hart has bought his ex-wife a very nice <laughs> brand new Cadillac Escalade for her birthday. Good for them. Them two been through a lot. They've lived a lot of their shit in the public eye. You know, they not together no more. I couldn't really understand why Tori, I mean, I understood why she was hurt and why she was mad. But I was just kept on trying to get the girl to understand that, bitch, you is winning. You making all this money every month from him with your kids and your kids are young, so you can look forward to that coming for quite some time, you know? So I just, I was really wanting her to hurry up and get through her process of grieving and getting over that marriage so that she could really enjoy her life and understand what a blessing that she had even though her marriage failed look here go the person that's in the car right next to me it's another little look how look how she trying to get in this damn car she gonna hit my car y'all look she trying not to hit it though bless her heart she ain't hit it y'all These other motherfuckers is far away from me and my about tow up the side of my damn car. Now she can't get her horn together, y'all. I'm telling you, today it's a little bit off, I know. She was she was gonna do well once she could really start to enjoy her life again. And it looks like, you know, what I always tell you, what how do you get over an old man? A new man, right? Okay, she got her new man. She seems to be happy. They all seem to be happy. Moved on. Everybody rich. Hey, if you like it, I love it. The ugly little boy that uh, over there with um, 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 Birdman and I, what's his name, y'all? The ugly one y'all know who i'm talking about anyway he he didn't came out with his new, young thug he didn't came out with his new album and he's decided to call it the carter six if you know that name it's because that has been the name of little wayne's past five albums i assume and uh he has adopted and were actually taken really just stolen the damn name and decided to make that which is stupid to me just ignorant why the fuck are you still in that okay but whatever you guys i'm just i don't even like them kids i just really hope that he come out that the shit blow over and you know that he'll go off somewhere and lastly you guys dame dash on the breakfast club the other day i only got two words for you he mad <laughs> All right, you guys, let me get off of here. We do this every single week, so make sure that you rate, comment, and subscribe, and make sure you come back. Until next time, rock stars. Bye.